Okay, here we have another video from the Jeff Head channel for naval vessels. And what I have here is a 1 700th scale. Believe me, I'd like to have a 1 350th scale of these ships, but they're not made in that scale, so we have to settle for what we have. And I had to even do some scratch building to get what I've got. What you have here are uh, two South Korean Docto class LPH aircraft carriers, uh, both of them with uh, F 35 B's loaded on them. And uh, as you can see, uh, they're loaded right up. We've got the 6112, and over there the 6111, which is the Docto itself. And uh, we've got them loaded up with uh, quite a few F 35s. In addition, like we did, if you'll look up the Japanese uh, <clears throat> version of this dual aircraft carrier, I have a SV or EV-22 on both of these ships <clears throat> that is an AEW aircraft early warning version of the Osprey, which is a natural and great role for that aircraft. Uh, as you can see, it would, it would work wonders for the Korean ships as well. And uh, so here you have uh, the Korean jump jet carrier. They have already made uh, the commitment to buy the F-35Bs. Now escorting them, we would have uh, two more ships uh, but what I have are the Sijong, the Great Class uh, Aegis Destroyers. These destroyers are a little bit bigger than the United States Arleigh Burke Flight 2A destroyers, but they are loaded uh, with uh, uh, much more in terms of their capabilities. This uh, first one here is the 911. It is the Sijong the Great. And as you can tell, uh, all of these ships, I have the, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the metal, <laughs> railings and, and whatnot, the helicopter on the back. But if you look, you've got two 48 cell VLS. One is a U.S., uh, 41 cell MK41. Another one is a Korean uh, uh, VLS that shoots their Tomahawk-like missiles. They have three separate missiles that they can shoot out of that with ranges from 500 to 1500 miles. And then they've got uh, two VLS cells, as you can see, uh, that are MK41s that allow them to shoot standard missiles and the other missiles. Another very important uh, part here is if you'll look at their uh, anti-surface missiles, you don't see two quad packs, you see four quad packs. So they have 16 Harpoon-like missiles, but these are Korean missiles uh, that are newer than the Harpoon. Uh, but they have 16 of them anti-service missiles. They also have up front, as you can tell, a 21-cell uh, ram launcher for close-in air defense. So when you take the 248s and the 32, that's 128 missiles, you add another 21, and uh, you've got, and then add another 16, you've got, 165 missiles on this ship. Uh, this is a, a great ship, in my opinion, for the United States to use. I suspect the United States is going to take uh, a, an even better path, but more expensive path, for its cruiser-sized vessel, which I'm hoping will be the Zumwalt uh, that is set up to be an anti-air 
multi-role class uh, cruiser that can carry 140 at least, maybe 160 uh, MK41 cells uh, plus lasers and uh, also in addition to the lasers, a railgun for close-in weapons. Here you have the Docto. Uh, one of these uh, is an Academy ship model. This one here is uh, Orange Hobby, and it's a resin vessel, uh, but it's, it's the same ship as you can tell. And uh, we'll go back and look at the back. It does have the well deck, and I've got two LCACs uh, that they have. In addition, we have another of these large Aegis class destroyers. This is uh, 993. And what I did is I took a 700 scale uh, Aegis Flight 2A uh, destroyer, lengthened it just a bit, and then added uh, again the 16 uh, VLS excuse me, the 16 canister a harpoon-like anti-surface missile. And I think that's just very powerful. The 16-cell ram launcher and then the two, three uh, VLS launchers that shoot both the U.S., all of the U.S. standard missiles as well as uh, the Korean uh, anti-surface missiles. Uh, so they have their own tomahawks. Uh, this also has, both of these ships uh, have a British uh, 30 millimeter close-in weapon system as opposed to the phalanx that the U.S. vessels and the Japanese vessels carry. Uh, as you can see from the back end of this ship, uh, this, this shows how these uh, these ships are set up to carry two uh, helicopters. One is about to go into its stall uh, there with its rotors folded, and the other Seahawk is uh, set up there uh, just landing. So, and again, you see the <clears throat> very tiny, very small uh, metal uh, railings and whatnot, as well as uh, the metal for the um, main mass. And then finally we have two of these LCACs. If you'll look at these two guys, they each have uh, four uh, uh, large trucks on them. This one here has a air-to-ground, I mean a ground-to-ground anti-surface uh, missile launcher uh, on one of the trucks as well as uh, two more trucks that they're hauling and then they are going to haul them into uh, the back of this uh, Docto class uh, LPH. Uh, this is something that uh, the, the Chinese have that the excuse me the Koreans have that the Chinese didn't put on their Izimu or the Hayuga class because they have their own is uh, Osumi class uh, LPDs that have uh, a well deck. And right now they've got three of those and uh, may build more of them at some point. Uh, but this is in fact the, uh, the Korean uh, LPH Docto. Now, the, the Koreans have three of these large Aegis vessels and have already started building a fourth and have approved uh, three more altogether. So they'll end up with six of them. They also have the KDX-2. I could not find a model of them anywhere. I think there is a resin model, but those uh, resin models are very expensive. And I didn't see building one uh, or two of those uh, for the money. I thought these two uh, Aegis class, Sejong the Great, uh, would make my point for me. If you think about it, 
just think about it, 165 missiles in each one. So there's 330 missiles in those two ships. Uh, the, the, the vessels that the British, for example, carry, the Daring class, uh, have 48 plus 8. So they have 56 missiles in each of their mainline anti-air class destroyers. And you see these ships carry three times as many missiles in each. So that's a, a fairly impressive load that, uh, that the uh, Chinese are, are able, excuse me, the Koreans are able to carry. But there would be two more, a smaller uh, uh, KDX-2 class ships uh, in this arrangement. Each of these, uh, Sejong the Great, uh, displaces 12 to 13,000 tons. So they're larger than the Aegis class and larger than the Ticonderoga class and in fact have more missile cells than the Ticonderoga class. The Ticonderoga class has 122 plus 8, so that's 30, 130 missiles. However, uh, they are outfitted with all the latest Aegis where these uh, don't have the BDM capability uh, to do both BDM and normal uh, anti-air defense. The, the three new ones they are building will have that version of the Aegis software and hardware to do that, which is what the, China, uh, the Japanese are doing with their two new Otegos as well. But in the meantime, uh, the Koreans and the Japanese have developed their answer to, uh, along with the United States, to the uh, Chinese buildup of, uh, of uh, many uh, destroyers and uh, destroyer-sized uh, vessel or cruiser-sized vessels that they're calling large destroyers, the type 055. But even there, these, these uh, Korean uh, vessels significantly uh, uh, outweigh them in terms of uh, weaponry. And, uh, and, of course, they're using the United States and Lockheed uh, to, to make that weaponry uh, very modern. So we'll close off with that. One last look here at the, uh, at the uh, Sejong the Great and its large Korean flag that, that they carry. It was nice building these. I do, by the way, I have bought a new uh, 1 350th Flight 2 uh, Arleigh Burke that I'm going to uh, rebuild into a 1 350th Sejong the Great and then I will uh, display here uh, all the major destroyers that are available uh, and we can look at the differences between the, the various Burke classes, the the German uh, new, newest uh, destroyer, uh, uh, the UK's destroyer, the Chinese, the, the, the Russians. We'll take a look at each one of those once I get that uh, 1 350th Sejong the Great. Uh, on the other hand, I may uh, show the cruisers and have the Tycho, the Type 055, the two Russian cruisers, and uh, the Sejong the Great. Uh, the only thing about the Russian cruisers, they are powerful, uh, but their technology is old and they just have not had the money to do the kind of upgrades that they would like to do. And so you end up having ships like this that are really uh, much newer, you know, two generations newer, than the uh, uh, than the Russian ships, and uh, the Russians are just hard trapped for money. But there you have it, uh, a Korean two carrier uh, carrier strike group. Uh, this to go along with my two carrier strike group that I have in one seven hundred scale for the Japanese. Take a look at that one. 
because I included a, a replenishment vessel as well as the full group. And then you might look up my two carrier group, uh, American uh, Strike Group, that includes two one three hundred and fiftieth scale vessels, one a Nimitz class uh, aircraft carrier, the Ronald Reagan, and the other a Ford class carrier uh, that I built and had to do a lot of scratch building to build from a Nimitz class and put out a uh, Ford class carrier, but it turned out all right, and it's got a full uh, full carrier strike group for the U.S. So with that, I'll close. We do have a single carrier strike group for the uh, Russians and a single carrier strike group for the Japanese out there in 350th scale. And uh, uh, I had one for the, uh, the British as well, but it was the Invincible class. So it's not showing as well as these ships do. Uh, I'm hoping, of course, that the uh, British or Airfix or somebody will come out with a 1 350th scale uh, Queen Elizabeth class. But until then, here's another two carrier strike group. This one for the Koreans in the Docto class. You guys have a great day. Look forward to your comments. And uh, please spread uh, uh, the channel around. Uh, have other people look at it. It's always good to hear from folks and uh, and hear what they have to say about uh, the various ships uh, in their parts of the world. Thanks. This is Jeff Head. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.